Okay, so welcome to day 8 of the daily vlog video challenge that I've set for myself for this month. Uh, today, being Monday, I decided I was going to use Mondays for pagan topics. So today's topic is going to be on um, getting started. You know, um, I started when I was like 14. And um, I can kind of give you advice on, on, you know, like I've been, I'm like 45 now, so I was 14 when I started. So I'll try to give you some, you know, some tips and tricks and, and things on where to begin. Um, I think first and foremost is you kind of have to throw away the idea that there is have to. You know, uh, religion should be between you and the divine and nobody else. Okay. Some people might argue, well, you need, uh, you can't be a witch unless you are um, initiated by a witch. But I don't agree with that at all. You know, I feel that um, religion is between you and the divine and nobody else should be involved. There's no right way to express religion. You know, I, I mean, I, you can follow the rules, I guess you're given the rules, but ultimately it's really what you believe. So that's my first rule. And then probably my second advice is prepare yourself to do a lot of reading because um, if one thing that I've discovered with Wicca and pagan religions is that it's a very educational thing. You, you're learning, you know, history and psychology and uh, you know, there's a lot of books, <laughs> a lot of books out there. Um, the first book I read was Drawing Down the Moon by Margaret Adler, which I highly recommend. I mean, it's a pretty thick book, but it, it's like a, a reference book. You don't have to read it from start to finish and stuff, but it really spoke to me, and it kind of delved into the actual spiritual aspect rather than practice of it. Like, you can say the words, you can cast the circle, you can wave your ritual knife around, but it's not going to mean anything unless it, it touches you in your spirit. So, um... I prefer books that discuss the religious aspects, not so much the practice aspects. So I like Margaret Adler's book, or M Margaret, Margaret, Margot Adler. <laughs> a long time. But yeah, Margot Adler's book, Drawing Down the Moon. Um, and then I also like read Starhawk's Spiral Dance. Um, that was also kind of enlightening because it talks about the spiritual aspect and talks about the goddess and you know, practical, everyday things, um, and she also read, she also wrote books after that, that one is called something like Dancing with the Dark, and the other one's Truth or Dare, which, she, she's part of the reclaiming tradition, and then they're tied more into, like, um, social action, you know, like, she did a lot of work with, like, um, women's rights, civil rights, uh, protecting the environment, she did a lot of activities and protests and social activity, um, so I like, you know, I like those books. And then there's a, tons of books that you can read. The authors are Scott Cunningham and Sybil Leak, uh, Phyllis Cur Curot, uh, I, I can't remember how her last name's pronounced, um, and, just, and tons more. You can actually Google and look up lists of books. And some people would be like, well, what about this author and that author? Because there's some people who are like, oh, they're just horrible authors. Read the bad books too, because you, you'll form your own opinion. You know, just read anything with a little bit of skepticism, because you know you, you need to form your own opinion. You need to know thyself. You know, that's one of the um, beliefs I think of most of the pagan religions is that you have to really kind of know who you are and kind of come into the person that you should be. So that being said, um, with getting started, a lot a lot of people are asking like, what do I need for my altar and all those other things. You don't really need anything, you know, even if it's just a single candle. It's just a little sacred space. It should represent you and your spiritually, spiritualism and your belief. And that it should give you time where you can have a little prayer, work a little magic, you know, store your stuff. Uh, you might not be able to have a permanent altar. It could end up being, say, a drawer in a dresser. Or I have a box that I can pull out and, and pull stuff out of. You can even get portable altars that just fit in your bag. Um, but what you're doing is every time you set things up, whether, you know, tools or even just set aside time, it, you create your sacred space as you need that. Um, oh, what else to do when you first start? Um, I also suggest a uh, journaling, you know, because when you're first starting out, you're kind of shedding the beliefs you previously had and adopting new ones. And that stage of in-between, um, a journal kind of helps you clarify your thoughts and put things in perspective. Some people 
come from, say, a Christian background and they enter into paganism and they want to shed and throw away the Christian belief. And you don't have to. There is no have to. There, I've even met some, what they call, I guess they call them Christo-pagans, where, where they have a god and a goddess, but it's uh, Mary and Jesus, you know, which you know, it can work. You know, Jesus was a harvest god. You know, he died for his people and rose again. It's like, you know, our myth, you know, our whole solar year reflects that. You know, our god dies and is reborn every year. So, um, you know, keep some sort of journal and express your thoughts and emotions on things and allow yourself to be wrong you know because you can you know i think people always want to try to do right and do things correctly but by stumbling and by making the mistakes sometimes those are the most powerful lessons so um allow yourself that and i would also suggest um don't be shy about asking questions um and just because you're asking people like if you were to ask me a question and then a nut you know like a priestess of a coven or a priest of you know another tradition and stuff you might even find different answers and that's where it's important where you need to know where your thoughts are and what you need out of the religion okay don't look outside of yourself for the answers because ultimately you have all the answers it's just a question of finding them and it helps to talk to other people who even disagree with you so that you can sharpen your own opinion okay so and you don't have to it's not it's not like an us versus them it's a oh, they have a different form of opinion. Why do you believe that? And then that can help you shape your own belief systems, whether you agree with it or not. So I would also suggest that, you know, ask questions and be open to debate, but don't engage in, okay, you're right, I'm wrong, or allowing other people to tell you that you're wrong. Because you know what? You're allowed to be wrong. <laughs> you're allowed to make mistakes. <laughs> um, I would also suggest, you know, for the beginners, you know, to... Don't, don't be shy in trying new things. And sometimes it's also a process of unlearning beliefs. Like one of the things that I've really noticed in pagan circles is that you can see how th our backgrounds get carried into the next phase of our lives. And uh, probably the most, like, like an example, would be our views of relationships and what is right for marriage and couples and things like that. Um, when I first got into joining groups, I've met um, people who had open marriages and stuff, and I was kind of stuck in the idea of like, well, you know, that just doesn't work, and you know, so on and so forth, but they did. You know, they would be married for a very long time, and they would have certain rules for their spouses on who they could sleep with. Sometimes they had to have permission, or they had to know one another, or, you know, whatever, um, but they did make it work, and so who am I to judge, you know, if, if it, they make, as, as long as everybody's a consulting adult, you know, I don't really care. Um, also going to pagan festivals really opened my eyes to the different paths and different ways. So instead of finding, like when you're starting out, I think you want to try to find, oh, I want to find the right, I want to find the correct way of doing it, the right way of doing it. Once you start, if you meet other pagans, you're going to see so many people do different things in a different way for different reasons. And their way might not work for you. So explore and maybe even experiment to see what does work for you. Because I find like with my own spiritual path, um, like, you know, I was into Wicca, and then now I'm more into Pagan, and I really find I like the, uh, the Buddhist beliefs and some Shinto and Taoism, you know, beliefs, because I would read about it and I'd be like, hey, that's kind of a neat idea, you know, I think that sounds like that works, so I would adopt that. Or even, you know, Native American beliefs. Uh, I would say, though, that if you do um, start learning, don't feel like when you're starting paganism that you have to hate your old path. Like if you were a Christian, don't feel like just because you're pagan that you have to jump on the bandwagon and like, oh, Christians, Christians burned us and Christians did that. You know, they're on their path, okay? Uh, they might not agree with you and you'll probably even find people saying that you're going to hell and stuff. But that's their belief and you have to kind of leave it with them. You don't have to engage. You can choose to not do that. And trust me when I tell you, by taking the stance of seeing them as, you know, like, we can all get along. You don't have to hate me. You don't have to be scared of me. And I don't have to hate you. I have friends who are Christians. I have friends who are Muslims and Jewish and, and atheists and stuff. And it's because there is, like, mutual respect, you know, and it can work. And, and I actually enjoy people's differences. I like the fact that these people believe differently than me, and I like the fact that they 
they can respect that. I mean, sometimes you can see that they don't really agree with what I believe, but that's cool. That's that's fine as long as they're not going to be rude and nasty about it. You know, we can all get along. So I would say that when you're first starting out, don't get too hung up with the tools and the have to and, and things like that. Take it slow. Learn it. You know, learn it as at your own pace. Don't feel like you have to do that. Some people mention a year and a day. Some people take longer. Some people don't take that long. You know, um, you have to find your own. You have to see where the lines are drawn for you, not for everybody else. Okay, you're an individual, and if you're going into any sort of religion, you have to find out, especially like your personal relationship with the divine and how you conduct yourself with that and what you're getting out of it. So. Um, if you have any questions or comments or if you want to see other you know, kind of future videos or me going over certain topics, please by all means leave comments below and I will cover them in future videos. And as always, thanks for watching.